Okay, welcome today. God bless you for being here. Um, welcome back to the channel. Please take your seats. God bless you. And open up your Bibles with me. We're going to be looking at one verse in Genesis. Verses, or excuse me, ver chapter 3, verse 8. Genesis 3, 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I humble myself in your sight, Lord. Holy Spirit, I cannot do this without you. I am completely and totally dependent upon you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask you to breathe life upon this word. Let me speak your words and your words alone. Let your fire and your anointing be on me. Touch our eyes, our ears, and our hearts, Lord, and give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. And we give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to be talking about voices. There are three voices of God that I want to talk to you about this morning. You ever wonder why they would hear the voice of God? Was God just walking along talking to himself? No, I don't think so. So we're going to be looking at some words and what they mean today. So you might want to take notes today. So first, what is God's voice? We're talking about three voices of God. What is God's voice? Number one, God's voice is thunder. <clears throat> now the word voice used here when Adam and Eve heard the voice of God walking in the garden was the word thunder. The word in the Hebrew was kol kol. And it means to call out loud a voice or a sound crackling. Cry out. Proclaim, sing, or yell. I kind of think they heard the thunder of God and it scared them. That's what I think. Now, he could have been singing, I suppose. He could have been calling for them. But I honestly think that he was just thundering as he walked in the garden. <clears throat> now, the word for thunder, for voice, kol kol, is the same word that is used for thunderings. If you'll go to Exodus 20.18, this is when uh, God was speaking to the people. And it says, And all the people saw the thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when they said, and, and when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they backed away. They didn't want to be anywhere near it because it was frightening. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for your God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. See, God's voice sounds like thunder. It shakes and it rattles when he speaks. We can see this in John. John chapter 12, verse 28. <clears throat> Jesus is praying and he says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it. And will glorify it again. And then verse 29 says, The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Now, <laughs> I have a pastor friend of mine 
that clicks his heels down to the earth and says, no, the people couldn't understand God's voice. They thought it was thundering. No, I believe they were saying that his voice thundered. That it was a powerful voice that when he spoke, spoke, the ground shook. It vibrated through them. Um, now, if you want to be on my side on this, look at verse 30. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. So, why would they think it thundered if he just said there and said that it was a voice speaking out of heaven? Now, God's voice is as thunder. It, uh, the other night, we had a thunderstorm here. And the thunder, well, I guess it was so close to us that it shook the entire house. The doors and the windows were rattling. It was like, every time there was a crash of thunder, rattled the windows, rattled my teeth almost. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. In Acts, when they prayed for boldness and for signs and wonders, the Bible says the place where they were assembled was shaken. Was it an earthquake or was it a thundering? We don't know. It's not really clear on that. But the place was shaken. And thunder will shake. Number two. What is the voice of God? It's a shofar. Pass me that shofar up here. I'll come down and get it to you. It's a shofar. It's the sound of a trumpet. We just read in Exodus that they heard the sound of a trumpet. I believe what they were hearing because the Bible describes God's voice as a trumpet. And we're going to look at that in a minute here. But I believe that was another one of the voices of God. I believe that was God and Jesus together. There was the thundering and there was the trumpeting. The word for trumpet in the Hebrew that was used there is shofar. Getting ahead of myself. In Exodus 20, 18, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpets and the mountain smoking. And when the people, it's wet out here, folks. <laughs> it's a good day to be a duck or a frog. Everything's sticking to each other. When the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Now, the word sh trumpet, as I just said, is shofar. And it means a cornet or a curved horn, as you just sh saw, that I blew through there. Uh, that one is an African kudu. That traditionally, the Hebrew trumpets would be the ram's horn. Uh, those, the kudu horn sounds so much more beautiful to me. So, Revelation 1.10 says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. A great voice as of a trumpet. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. That is Jesus speaking. You read in your Bible, those letters will be in the red. So the voice of Christ is as a trumpet. The voice of God is as a thunder. Hallelujah. Now, what is a trumpet? It's an announcement. A trumpet is used for an announcement. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 2, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do. So, a trumpet is used to announce things throughout history. When kings or royalty 
or other people of great importance would come into an area. They would have a herald and a trumpeter come and they would sound a trumpet. And then someone would herald, the great and honorable so-and-so is coming. It's important because we're going to come back to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, they would blast with the trumpet. It's also a call to worship. Whenever we get ready to have service, I will always blow the shofar. You know, a lot of churches, I remember when I was a kid, Sunday morning they would ring the bells to call people to worship. Well, we, we blow a shofar. We don't have a bell. Hallelujah. It's a call to worship. Also, it's a call to battle. And it is a voice of celebration. Amen. And it is a voice of triumph. Amen. That is what a trumpet is and what it is for. It's also a musical instrument in some cases. And number three, what is God's voice? It is peace. God's voice is peace. It can be a thundering. It can be a trumpet. But it can be peace. 1 Kings 1911. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. The word used for voice here once again, is cold, cold. So it could be a still, small crackling, or a singing, or a call out. Hallelujah. Now, the key to this voice is the word still. And in Hebrew, it is the ma ma. And it means in the feminine, quiet, calm. It is a voice of tranquility. And when I, when I think of that, I think of Jesus speaking to the wind and the waves and saying, Peace! Be still! And it settled the storm. And the disciples were like, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? It is a voice of peace. There's a song... I love this song. Sometimes he calms the storm. Sometimes he calms the child. Hallelujah. That's so beautiful. Now, we're going to look at the voices, these three voices, and how they apply to the Trinity. You can see the Trinity once again in these voices. We've looked at three voices, and they speak, all three of them, of the Trinity. Number one, God, the judge. He speaks as a thunder in judgment. Hebrews 10.30 says, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth to me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. A thunder is frightening. How many mothers have to comfort small children during the thunderstorm? Because it scares them. Even animals, cats, and I had a cat. When it would thunder, he would run and hide under the bed. And I know people who have dogs that are the same way. Thunder is frightening. You feel like the world's coming to an end. And it's that voice that is used when God will be executing judgment. That thundering, fearful voice. The people did not want God to speak directly to them because they were afraid they would die. 
because the thunder of his voice. What exactly is thunder? It is a shaking, like I talked about in the uh, storm we had here the other night. Uh, in the Cre Hebrew, it says a crackling. So, it is a shaking, a rattling, a crackling. And it is the voice of God's judgment. Number two, we talked about a still small voice. And that would be the voice of the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us in a still, calm, gentle voice. You won't, you won't ever argue with the Holy Spirit. You, you can argue with God. God will nudge you and you can, you can disagree with Him. You can argue with Jesus. But the Holy Spirit will say something to you one time. And you better not shun it. He won't argue with you. He might just put it on your heart and leave it there. But there's no arguing with the Holy Spirit. You know, the uh, book of uh, Proverbs, Solomon says, that a soft answer turneth away wrath. Holy Spirit is not here to bring wrath. Jesus said, I will bring you another comforter, even the spirit of truth that the world knows not. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is a voice of comfort. Mm -hmm. We have to tune ourselves to be able to hear Him. In amateur radio, sometimes if you're working Morse code, or even if you're talking to somebody, but really with Morse code, uh, you're listening with a lot of static in the background. You turn on a radio, we call it a super heterodyne receiver. And you'll hear <laughs> and every time there's lightning in the distance, you can hear it. They, they make static crashes. You'll just hear it. It'll be like <laughs> every time there's lightning. And there's somebody off in the distance that you're trying to communicate with and their voice is weak and faint like this. Really, the best thing that you can do rather than trying to turn the radio up louder is to put on headphones and turn the radio down as low as you can get it. And you'll be able to faintly pick out that voice a lot easier than with all that static crashing. What am I trying to say? Sometimes we need to put on headphones that isolates us from all the noise of the outside world and then begin to turn those things that other thoughts that are on our mind and try to focus solely on the voice of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to hear from the Holy Spirit, you've got to turn the volume down, folks, of all the other things that are going on around us. Quit worrying about your bills. Quit worrying about anything else. And pull apart that time that is just for God. And spend that time on your face with everything else turned off. Then you'll be able to hear Him. You know, the Bible talks about those that have their consciences seared with a hot iron. Those are the people that don't want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. They begin to quench Him every time that He tries to speak to them till they become numb and can no longer feel His presence or hear His voice. That's a dangerous place to be, folks. You want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And lastly, the voice of Christ. Hallelujah. It is the voice of a trumpet. In Colossians 2.14, it says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took out all, or excuse me, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Well, what does that mean? Well, back in the day, it was common 
For when two kingdoms came together, when they captured the ruling king of the other dominion that they were conquering, they would put them in chains and they would sound a trumpet and they would march them through the streets to shame them. That's what Jesus did to Satan and all of his minions when he rose from the grave. Hallelujah! God is so good. And I guarantee you there was a trumpet sounded when that happened. And just as a royalty coming into a city was announced with the blast of a trumpet, that's how the return of Christ is going to be. I had a dream the other night. I was talking with somebody and I heard, off in the distance, very faintly, ba -da -da. and I stopped talking and I said, did you hear that? It sounded like a shofar and we listened. And then I heard it again, ba -da -da. When I woke up, I checked to see if my wife was still next to me. <laughs> I just want to make sure I didn't sleep through that trumpet call, you know? Hallelujah. So in 1 Timothy 4.16, For the Lord himself shall descend... Excuse me, that's 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Folks, that's talking about a shofar. It's not talking about Donald John Trump. I hate to bust your bubble, but that's talking about a trumpet. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. <coughs> when Christ returns, it will be with a trumpet blast. There are those that believe that Christ is going to be here to return during the Rosh Hashanah celebration, the festival of trumpets, because the Bible says when the last trump, with the last trump, the last trumpet, the last blast of the shofar, and Christ will come cracking that eastern sky. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 15.51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. And I believe that's Rosh Hashanah at some point. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, Amen. and we shall be changed. Folks, are you ready? Are you ready for that day when Christ cracks the eastern sky? Are you ready? Should you not draw another breath? There is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. And I know people are down on the preacher because he tells them that you're going to hell. Folks, I want to tell you something. That's not because we're your enemy. It's because only a friend will tell you when you're wrong. You need to come to Christ before it's too late. When it's too late, it's too late. You die, there's no begging for mercy at that point. I mean, you can beg all you want to, but once you're done, the Bible says, it's appointed a man once to die, and then judgment. Look, if you look at my life, and I came to judgment, I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty. Because being a Christian, being born again, doesn't mean that you're good and you're perfect. It means that you are pardoned. My sins are forgiven. Though they were as scarlet, they are as white as snow. 
We sang that song this morning, Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? I want to extend this invitation to you for just that purpose. I don't want one of you that are watching or that are here today to wake up in eternity on the wrong side. You need to choose this day who you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We love you. We want you to be in heaven for eternity. Because heaven is a place of unspeakable joy. And hell is a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want you to bow your head, close your eyes, and say this prayer with me. Father God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I am a sinner, Lord, and my sin has separated me from You. I know it was because of my sin that Jesus died. He took my sin on that cross and paid the price that I could never pay. Lord, I am sorry for my sin. I turn from my sin, Lord, and I turn to You, Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, and cover me with Your blood. Save me, Jesus. Come into my heart and make me a new creation. Be my Lord, be my Savior, and be my soon-coming King. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, if you prayed that prayer today, and I hope you did, and you really meant it in your heart, well, God bless you and welcome to the kingdom of God. You are now my brother or my sister. Amen. And the angels of God are having a party in heaven. Because the Bible says that the angels of God rejoice over one sinner that comes to repentance. And I hope that's you this morning, folks. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Click the notifications bell. And share the video with your friends. Let us know how you're doing. Say something in the comments. Until then, until next time, God bless you. We love you and we'll see you real soon. Hallelujah.